Hello, Miss V, how are you? Hey, I am absolutely fabulous. I am super excited to be back and doing this. I've missed you all. I've missed you too. Everybody's missed you. So we got a lot of questions. So we'll probably have to do this in two parts. I want to first say hi to my boy. I love you, Eric. Hey, Mama. He's got his guitar with him today. He's strumming along. Oh, all right. Well, I'm trying to learn how to play the ukulele. I don't know why, but, you know. But, uh, but one of my dogs is dread. well, Lucas's dog is dreadfully afraid of it. I don't know why, so anyway. All right, so we are going to interview Lao, Lao Tzu. How do you say his name? So, if Eric, maybe you can bring him in and, and we'll ask him some questions. So, um, actually, he's been here waiting with us. Uh, oh. I have, I've had the pleasure of just kind of getting to feel his energy. We, you know, we had a little mix up on the time. And so I thought, don't go away, just sit with me. So yeah. we've just been sitting in meditation, Eric, Lao Tzu, and I. Oh, awesome. Okay, so oh, let me unmute. I mean, mute this. Sorry. All right, so um, well, describe him. And, and hello, um, Master Lao, I will call you. Yeah, he, he's very casual. Um, as he appears to me right now, he has a very casual appearance. It just looks like a white, very simple, almost like a tunic kind yeah. of um, attire on, very flowing, very smooth. Um, I wouldn't say there's anything extraordinary about the way I can see him in my mind's eye. Okay, well, first of all, I'm gonna ask you, that your name is really not, you know, Lao Tzu is really not your personal name, right? Because it really means old master or old man or old teacher. What is your real name? That's how I, that's how I prefer to be known. And that was what I understood to be my name from the beginning. Oh, wow. So what's, what would be on your birth certificate if you had a birth certificate though? He says there isn't anything in, in such manner that he could put it in terms that we would understand. She, I'm hearing him say she gung. Okay, she, that's she, good. She gung is what I think I'm hearing him say, but he said there, there's no relevance to that. And everything that in, in this human world, everything that we hold to be true, we might want to look at that. I know. So some say you really never existed and that Taoism was created by an amalgam of different philosophers. What, what do you say to that? You know, he's laughing because um, one of the things he and Eric and I were joking about is what's real. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Lao Tzu says, was Christ real? Yeah. Was Krishna real? Mm -hmm. Was Muhammad real? Mm -hmm. He says, of course I was real. Okay. All right, good. I'm glad you are because otherwise I would try to figure out why am I talking to something that doesn't exist? All right, now, can you talk about your childhood? Tell me about your mother. <laughs> um, Eric says, I'd love to tell you about mine, and he chuckles, but then we say, I digress, he says. I <laughs> know. So he's saying that he came from a very uh, gentle yet separate background. I'm hearing him say that love was understood, but the philosophies that he came to embrace as his truth and as his reality weren't um, present in his childhood. He did not get that from childhood. His mother was very nurturing, but his mother also worked very hard. Mm. Um, he says it was as if he, he didn't, um, have a place in her world. She was super busy. Did she, did they, so the father and mother both worked. What did they do? Um, he says there was, sorry, I gotta get my coffee. He says there was a lot of um, uh, stone work, a okay. lot of mason, we would call it masonry work, building. He's showing me um, structures that were being created. Okay, and, and the mother also the same? Mm -hmm. It was about hauling things. It was about nurturing um, the family. But he says there wasn't a lot of um, time yeah. to be bonded and to be nurtured. It was a very troublesome time. Oh, did you have a lot of siblings? 
he says there were six in total. Oh, okay. So were you uh, uh, from an impoverished class, middle class, upper class? He said in his time, they didn't call it classes, but you noticed that people were different. Hmm. And he said that he said he is of the streets. Oh, okay. So basic. Yeah, right. So what did you have a job when you grew up? But did you take over or, or do the same thing your your family did? With he said we all worked together. It was all about a common goal of, you know, he's showing me literally stacking stuff like okay. stones or boulders. Maybe what we would call builders eric says yeah like masons maybe mm -hmm. okay building you know walls and things like that all right did you ever have a wife and children yourself he says no okay um well uh it, it, go ahead and first well first one quickie how long did you live and how did you die some people say you lived a long time. I lived quite a long time, he says. If you must know in human terms, it was 80 plus years. Okay. But he's saying that a lot of those years were in, um, in hiding, if you will, in, in um, undercover, uh, out of the scene, he said. He, it's almost like he's showing me, because I, I see a visual, he's showing me a mountaintop where he retreated to. Um, to the, la the later part of his life. And why did you do that? Were people after you or you just wanted solitude? No. What? He's saying that no one was after him. He just loved the solitude, but people knew where he was. But it was a interesting because he's saying the journey to get to him, to get the wisdom from him, had to be really deep inside the human because it wasn't an easy task. Oh, so it's also like all those cartoons where you go up the mountain and there's this guru sitting on top and you ask him a question. It wasn't really easy to get to me, he said. So anyone that came to me, I knew that they were serious about enlightenment. Oh word enlightenment but he has a weird look on his face so i'm not sure what that well, means what are you saying now so enlightenment he he says enlightenment is simply becoming aware of certain truths that resonate inside of you and oh. another way to say enlightenment is to say waking up oh okay waking up to the truths that you know inside of you now can you tell me about your journey to the creation of Taoism, and of course, then the the book. So, so, so he's showing me. Um, he's showing me that there was certain things in his life that led him down paths that were not always um, loving. He said this, the examples around him when he was a young kid and into his teen years, there was a lot of turmoil, a lot of, he's using the word hatred, a lot of uh, possessiveness, if you will, over things. And he says, quite frankly, it was, a, it was what you might call or understand as an intervention. I was, I was he's saying, sitting by myself reading a book writing notes and it was all about what's this voice i hear and so it and so it would be he's saying translation he would become the translator of the knowledge oh so you uh, this the the information for the book doubt Dao Te Ching, I don't know how you say it, which, uh, you know, which uh, also is called the Book of the Way and its Virtue, mm -hmm. apparently. Um, was that channeled? Yes, very much so, he said. Really, from what? <laughs> from the old yeah. being, from the source. Oh, from source directly. Go right straight to the big dude. Or do he's that. showing me, he's, he's going like this, he's showing me parallels to the biblical rendition, he's calling it, 
or addition, I'm not sure of the word, um, between the Tao, the way, and the Bible. There are similarities. Oh, in, yeah. But there are also um, pieces that are independent and stand on their own. And he's saying that this is because of the level that uh, the human being had evolved to in each time. Ah. Every time there was a new manifestation or a new directive or a new piece of guidance from the source, the source took into mind the time frame that each person was in, each being was in, collective being was in, and how they would hear it and receive it. Wow, that's interesting. So tell me about Taoism. What are the, some of the main tenets? He says the first thing he wants everyone to understand is that there is always an opposite and it must be respected and understood. Mm. It's the whole picture, he says. Okay. So we must know both sides. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me more about... So, Taoism. in other words, he's giving the example of in Christianity, we will understand if someone does something bad, we will call it a sin. Mm -hmm. In Taoism, he says, if we do something bad, it isn't really bad. There's no label because in order to know its opposite, we have to know both sides. And understanding where your heart wants to land is what creates the individual character, oh. is understanding and connection to your heart. Well, that's really fascinating. And there's uh, something about simplicity too, right? Mm -hmm. Well, everything is simple, he says. And, and the way that it gets complicated is because everybody puts their own twist, their own spin on it. And he's, <laughs> it's funny because Eric is saying, tell them less is more, less, <laughs> less is more. Eric. Exactly, so Eric, I believe it. Less is more, people. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Lao Tzu, I'm sorry, chimes in to say that it's the human nature to feel better we got to get stuff we want stuff we we acquire stuff we think the more stuff we have that's what makes us happy when in reality all we're doing is masking what it is that we're avoiding yeah okay um now Taoism is present in china how did Taoism affect china historically, and how does it affect China now? Mm -hmm. He says there are still pockets, many pockets of people who walk in the truth of the Tao. He said it isn't something that has to be hidden or put under cover. It doesn't have the reputation that Christianity or severe philosophies might have like Christianity, like Judaism. He's mm. saying it is a very comfortable, a non-intrusive way. So not so much doctrine, doctrine, right? But just mm -hmm. more like philosophies rather than dictates and, and doctrine. Correct. And he's also saying that he wants to call attention to the differences between the East and the West. So Western, which would be us, we are more in the mind, more in the head with our philosophies, our dogma, our doctrine, whereas the Eastern philosophies are more heart-centered. Yes. And it's very difficult, he says, to come together, and he's doing this, and to blend the two together, although therein lies the learning and the peace. Yeah. So the, the, the objective is to not just do heart-centered, definitely not do just mind-centered, but to combine them both? And that's what he's doing. He's like, as he's showing, okay. his hands are actually coming together like this. Oh, okay. Uh, does Taoism have a god? No, he's very okay. Clear. No. Now he says, let's talk about this. There isn't a god in the sense that you worship 
something or that you you put it on a pedestal or that it's something that you aspire to please it isn't that it is a collective um source a collective energy so right. so what i'm seeing is is this god if you will um in taoism is is a compilation of everything it's it's a it's, source which is all, everything love mm -hmm. and life yep. is all okay but did you what did you believe mm -hmm. yes did you believe in source energy slash god he says i always knew there was something some higher bigger. power yeah mm -hmm. something bigger although it wasn't talked about he says it wasn't there wasn't time for that he says growing up oh, okay is there an afterlife in Taoism? A discussion about what happens after death? Life never ends. There is no death. But, and, but, but in your book and in the philosophy that you presented to the masses, uh, was there talk about an afterlife or was it just concentrating on the life as it is when you're alive in the human body? My, my, the book is very short, he's saying, and the book, got right to the point very quickly yeah. and oh he he wants to digress for a moment because he's saying to me to tell people that you cannot read this material literally it is not meant to be read literally nor is the bible hmm. What you want to do, he says, to understand the Tao and to fully embrace the lessons and learning is to use your intuition when you read the Tao. What does it invoke? What do you feel, he says? Yeah, does it, does it trigger any internal truths that you're holding mm -hmm. in your authentic and self, maybe? He always suggests, and Eric and I, this is what we were talking about prior to coming on. Um, he suggests that you work with it with a, with a pen and paper or some sort of journal, because as you read the chapters in the Tao, you're going you're gonna to re reveal different things that, that only you need. Oh, interesting. Well, I've got it. I don't know why I've never read it. I don't think I have. Uh, okay, so why and how does the soul return in Taoism? Because I hear it's not quite like the reincarnating that, that you know, Eric and other spirits talk about. I mean, how is that presented? The, the great recycling. It, it, is, it is the essence of the human. It is the soul. It is the spirit, he says, that continues on. It is... Um, there's no, um, he's using a human word, there is no recycling. You don't come back and have to get it again, he says. Um, you just continue as a soul. Okay, then you can reincarnate if you want, but you don't have to. Most times, yes, because he's saying everything, every philosophy is free will. Everything. Oh, yes. And so there is not, that's, this is what he wants to stress. There is not one clear cut way. Okay. All right. Um, Taoism, what, what is their perspective, your philosophy in Taoism or even in your book uh, about women uh, and women's rights? Mm -hmm. He says everything is balanced. Everything is equal. In order to embrace, he's referring to the yin yang, the okay. male energy, the female energy. There is a strong representation of the yin yang of both sides. There is, um, you must know the feminine side of yourself and the masculine side of yourself, and both are equal. There is no distinguishing factor one over the other. Okay, but uh, you know, as women, as individuals, what did Tao, how did Taoism look upon women as people, as inferior, as equals, I don't know. Um, maybe, so maybe it was never discussed, I don't know. He, he's, he's saying that that was never something that was an issue. It, I mean, it, and again, he's using human words that I would know how to use, but he's also wanting to, people to understand that you can't look at it with the the glasses if you will that we wear in today's world okay because we want to compare and it's not apples to apples oh yeah that's true okay uh 
Taoism honors the individual, not not the different sexes. Right. Okay. Good. I like that. Your life is spared. I'm kidding. Okay. Here's one from a a, a uh, blog member. Why did the cosmos split up in one big polarity of male and female, and we've had to struggle to find harmony? Mm -hmm. Um, he says very clearly, I answered that early on, we must always have an opposite. We cannot be fully complete until we understand the opposite. So it's basically the same thing as we have to go through the human experience. Yes, to, to get, absolutely. Uh, to understand all facets of love, you have to understand their opposites. And absolutely. that's what we're here to do is discover that we are love. Um, Okay, here's one, I uh, think for the same person. Yeah, this universe split up in man and woman. What is above it and what does it split from? I wish I'd read the book first. What's above it is the source of all, which is above everything. Okay. It is, it is the ultimate energy. It is, as we call it in the Tao, the undefined. Okay. The minute you define something, it loses that. It doesn't, it isn't what it is when you define it. There's no defining it. Oh, interesting. Here's another one, same person. Is it true that the Tao gives unification in physics? Cosmos is one big polarity? I don't know what that means. I'm not sure I understand what that. He's saying to me that his answer to that is everything has duality. Okay. And uh, this is, uh, uh, this person really likes um, physics. The Tao is about how all matter obeys heaven. Is that true? How all matter obeys heaven? Obeys heaven. Mm -hmm. Is it true that the Higgs particle is what this field of heaven is made of? Interesting. He says, the only thing he's saying to me is, as above is so below. Okay. And, and that's throughout Christianity, that's throughout uh, the Torah, that's throughout all of the major philosophies. So and what does that mean exactly? It is the same. What you oh, okay. have is what you have below. It's a mirror reflection of it. Okay, here's the last one about this uh, physics uh, component. Is it true that the Higgs particle already gives unification in physics, but our scientists don't yet see it? In other words, is the Higgs, the, the, the particle of what everything as above and below are made from? It hasn't been revealed yet because it's not time. But it is there the truth. Yes, there are certain individuals that recognize this, but they've not been allowed to have their voice yet because it's not time. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, now, did you, what, what's your opinion about Confucius and did you meet each other during your life, your lives? No, he says, no, I did not. And he was an amazing philosopher. He was a brilliant individual who also was a spark of the creator, was a source of all knowing. He says, we are one in the same, just as Jesus and I were one in the same. What's interesting to me, if I'm maybe the interpreter here for a moment, what I'm hearing is all across history, these beings, Confucius, Confucius Lao Tzu, Krishna, Muhammad, Jesus, they're all the same. Wow. They're all the same energy. They're all the same being. Like they, Christ consciousness. Yes. They just, oh, take consciousness. On, they just take on different physicalities. Oh, wow. And because of, he's showing me because of the level of maturation of where people are at and how they mature over the course of time, the teacher appears as they need to appear. Oh, yes, that's so true. Yeah. Oh, I have chills. Everybody, the teacher will appear. I have chill bumps. Oh, is there anything you want to say, uh, other stuff you want to say, stuff, you want to say about your book, Tao Te Ching? He said that it, it is to be read slowly 
and methodically. It is not something that you should sit down and blow through, he says. Yeah. Very, it is a very simple read, meant to be simple if you don't take it literal. Okay. Um, what what in, insights or epiphanies did you have once you transitioned? He's um, saying right away, it was very quick that this happened for him. He was tapped to be an ascended master very quickly. Wow. That speaks to all of the work he'd done previously. He just wanted you all to know that. But he also is saying one of the first things he realized was his last many years on the mountaintop, he already had a vision and knew what was coming. He actually was a brilliant psychic. He wow. could see where he was going and what would unfold for him when he got there. It was like being at the movies, Eric says, and seeing a preview. Oh, yeah. Watch the trailer. What was your transition like? Was there going to the white light or? He said it was one that was very peace filled. It was alone. I was alone and it was very calm. And it was, it was, it was like this. He does, whoosh, it was like that. But Eric is also saying, so was my transition like that. Yeah, it, that's true. It, it, Eric says, and, and Lao Tzu is confirming, we don't have to be anything ascended or uh, uh, master-like to have that whoosh over. Right. Good. Okay. So now what do you think about China presently and along with its leaders? There is a lot of uh, oppression. There is a lot of um, discrimination. There is a lot of unequal, which is something that creates an imbalance. And when, if you look at my book, he says, the book is all about balancing. Understanding that if you don't know the opposite of something, you don't, can't really understand it exists. What China chooses to do is to repress and keep secret that there are options. But the people will wake up. The people when? will when and how? He says it's slow and it's methodical and it's not a collective waking up. He said it's one person, one person. He's also telling me there are secret pockets. There are secret groups of people who study his word. Oh, good. Um, only because there are people that don't understand it. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, so what advice would you have to... China's leaders and our leaders in general. Well, let's start yeah. up with China's leaders. Mm. You know, the advice to China, it's funny because I have to tell you, Eric is chiming in and Eric is saying, everybody just needs to play nice. I know. So that's Eric. Um, so Lao Tzu is saying that um, embracing diversity and not being afraid of it is for all nations. Every nation needs to hear that. Every nation tries to protect its unique individuality in ways that repress and push other people down. There's no need for that. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other advice for China, uh, its citizens or leaders? Um, he wants... He wants the people that see this, that, that hear this message to send the energy of freedom and diversity and, and, and free speech, all of the things that these people have removed from them. They need to understand we can do this telepathically. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's get on it. Uh, is there anything that you would like, would have liked to add to your, to your book? It is complete. I think so too. I already feel it. How did you and this is from blog members? How did you and Confucius figure out the universe twenty five hundred years ago? Seriously, life wasn't fully as it should have been. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Did you hear me? No. Uh. -uh. Oh, sorry, people. Um, he's saying that no one should look at life as if 
it needs something more to complete it. Oh. If you look at life that it is fully as it should have been, you will be satisfied. That therein is the key to living peacefully. Oh. The reason people are at unrest should be more. Say that one more time. I, I apologize. I think we're freezing. I'm not sure why. The yeah. reason people are at unrest is because they think there should be more. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Uh, have you have your views or teachings changed at all? I would say probably no. He says no, 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 emphatically. Okay, what is the difference between your wisdom and enlightenment with that of Jesus? Well, the difference is that that I have taught and do teach that there's duality, that it's okay to see both sides. Where Jesus is teaching, put an emphasis only on one way and being in, in alignment with that one way and not giving any leeway for the other side. It's like Jesus is repressing a whole side of a being. Oh, wow. Um, let's just ask a couple more questions and then we'll, we'll do part two in the future. Um, was the one we know as Jesus a student of yours? No, we were one and the same. Okay, but as a human being, Jesus, did he study your work? No, Jesus was my work. Jesus was inherent. My work was inherent in the energy, in the embodiment. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. The one we eventually came to know is the Buddha. Was he or she at that time a student of yours as well, or is that going to be the same answer probably? Same answer. We're, they're same all one. answer. You're all one. Okay. Um, how does Zen play into your philosophy? Well, Zen is a, Zen is a way of being that is quite uh, complementary to the way in the sense that it creates a quiet space to examine all potential and to not be um, attached to an outcome. In fact, Zen is, is literally not being attached to any outcome, just letting whatever be, be. And that's very close to Taoism. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, I think we'll stop here, really, because uh, we've got so much good information, but we'll need a part two, which is probably going to be a bit shorter than this one. So I want to thank you so much, Lao Tzu. I will read your book, if I can find it in my bookshelf. Thank you so much, Veronica. You guys can check her out at veronicadrake.com. She teaches spiritual arts and all sorts of stuff, and, and I'll let you say more. But first, I love you, Eric. Eric, I love you. This has been incredible for me. It was a whole dialogue of learning and philosophy. And I am back doing readings. So many of you graciously, graciously flooded my inbox when I thought I could retire and just teach. But I am back doing readings. And I tell you what, I, I'm so blessed. And thank you, Elisa. You have my heart forever. Just get balanced. Don't you get overworked now. You need time with Mason. Her gotcha. Kid, baby. Happy birthday, Mason. One years old Sunday. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.